Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So today I have another cafe sketch tutorial for you. Let's go. So it's always a joyful experience riding on the Vancouver Metro. We call it the SkyTrain here because the train is actually running on bridges above ground level. We can see the mountain views and the cityscape underneath. Here I am at Commercial Broadway Station. And there are tons of cafes, restaurants, and shops on Commercial Drive here in Vancouver. It's a very famous street and also lots of murals. And as I keep walking, I see a bookstore here. I think I've been in here some years ago with friends. Yeah, very interesting books. And seeing old fashioned brick buildings is always instantly brings me back to the past. And I love it so much. And here I'm sitting down waiting for my lunch to be ready for me and looking at the view outside, the beautiful blue sky, white clouds and the bookstore on the other side of the street. And now it's brunch time for me. I ordered a ham and egg sandwich with salad and a cup of uh, cafe latte. I just love this light turquoise color of the mug. So beautiful. Of course, I'm going to sketch it first before I drink it. So I just quickly visualized the size and placement on a white space first with hand gestures. Now I'm starting to draw this ellipse shape of the opening and the body and the handle. Starting with the outlines and then filling the inner details, a little bit detail for the ring of the handle. Now I'm drawing the rim of the mug. It was kind of broken lines because the shine, it's kind of shines. And the inner rim of the coffee the cute heart shape and the swirls of cream mixed with the coffee underneath. Really pretty design and lots of bubbles. So just quickly drawing and summarizing what I see rather than just copying every single bubbles on there. And this takes a little bit of patience but it's really fun, very satisfying. Now I'm drawing the outline of the little dish underneath. The back is being covered by the mug and then using broken lines to draw the rim too, to show the light shine around it. A little accentuation around the bottom of the mug. And that's it for the line drawing. And it's time to add watercolors. So just wetting the surface of the cafe first with clear water. Wet into wet. Some yellow, medium yellow. That's the first layer. For watercolors, it's very important to start with the lightest color. And wet on wet, some orange. And a little bit of brown or burnt sienna. In between the swirl shape too. So three colors so far. The brightest, the warm colors. And now adding a little bit of contrast. So this is a dark tone of... Uh, brown. It's kind of like a raw umber. So you can mix a little bit of ultramarine blue into the uh, regular brown to make a very intense dark brown. Now just wetting the dish and the surface area of the mug with clear water. Mix green with blue to get this turquoise color and painting very loosely. It's a very bright sunny day and the sunshine is giving a lot of three dimension to the mug and the little dish underneath. Mixing in even more ultramarine blue into the turquoise for some mid to dark tones here and there as I observe very loosely. And also underneath the mug, there's the dark clear shadow. And now I really like how the color of the mug and the plate and the shade turn out to be. It's a very soothing painting experience and add a little bit of shadow inside around the rim. Now finally painting the shadow with a mix of ultramarine blue and pink purple or royal purple. 
an even more intense shadow somewhere there. The sunshine comes from mostly around my right hand side. So the shadow is pretty much on the left. Yeah, it's actually getting very busy. It's a lunch hour and a lot of people are coming in. A lot of people are staying for a long time after lunch. And I'm going to enjoy this scone. Maybe not all of it, just half of it. And before that, I'm going to sketch it. It's my favorite cheese and chive scone. Starting with the circular outline and the little dish underneath, the rim, very loose, open, broken lines. And now I'm starting to add these textures using different little lines and shapes to show the texture of cheese and chive. Yeah, so the surface of a scone can be very random with different little popping up shapes here and there. And that's it for the line work. Now it's watercolor time again, just wetting the surface with clear water blending on some lemon yellow and medium yellow or cadmium yellow, wet on wet, some mid-tones of orange. Just wetting the dish with leftover uh, grayish color with lots of water. Now adding some darker tones with mix of orange and burnt sienna. And some just really clean burnt sienna right on there, wet into wet. A lot of bakery items have lots of um, layers of colors. And when painting watercolors, it's always a great idea to start with the lightest tone, the yellows, the orange, and then move on to the browns. Just quickly adding the shadow of the scone on the left side because the sunshine comes from the right. A little bit more rendering for the little dish and the shadow underneath. That's it. Very loose and simple. And here is the view outside the window on my left. And after having half of that scone, I'm ready to sketch the view in front of me, the interior of the cafe. One of my favorite subject matters to sketch now. Starting with the top beam and the pole somewhere here in the middle is really acting as a large ruler to help with the uh, proportion of everything else in the cafe. Very important. This is the largest shape that I see. And drawing this largest uh, form first really helped me to connect with other objects in this interior space. As you can see, I just drew the little lamp right there. And underneath the lamp, there's another smaller one. As you can see, the circle is smaller because that lamp is in the far distance. Keep drawing this beam right up there and keep connecting the middle part, some more little lamps in the distance around the counter area where the barista works. And this is the back wall. Now I'm starting to draw this girl as part of the group of three girls chatting, starting with the top of her head, her hair, and then her face from the side view, her shirt and part of her arm. With the elbow, there's her jacket hanging behind her. Add some more hair details. Yeah, and this is her laptop screen, cup of coffee, bottles behind. And drawing her friend right there. So drawing people from real life observations really helps me to understand their characters even better to create more lively lines. And here's another young guy behind them, studying very intently. And I just drew the brick wall on the uh, upper right-hand corner and then the ceiling area, the wall. There's another uh, speaker or something over there. Wall structures, some more lines that defines the perspective. And keep connecting the parts behind this girl, the tiles on the wall. So just um, drawing in very simple shapes. I don't need to know what those things exactly are. Just follow what I see and follow the energy and movement within this cafe. Some little plants around the counter area. Some cups drying. 
some more tiles behind this girl and another little plant. There's a little sign here. Okay, and keep drawing the end of the counter. I know where the counter ends is around the end of the wooden pole here on the left. And another little plant here on the floor. Drawing this lady customer over here ordering her coffee. Yeah, she was moving pretty fast. So I kind of half drawing from observation and half drawing from my memory. Some more counter space and the bakery display area here on her left. Yeah, and add another wooden pole over here. There's another kind of little display area around the middle of the pole. And it's a server guy wearing a hat. Add some more uh, three-dimensional interior lines in the back. So just seeing and following those angles rather than really having really precise measurement. Just follow the direction and angle of those lines as I see. Adding these little menu blackboards on the back. This is a black carpet. The wooden floor. And adding this hanging lamp over here around the foreground. So this is actually a staircase going downstairs where the washroom is and drawing this um, older guy over here sitting and working on his laptop. Drawing very quickly of the things that I see, summarize what I see rather than copying. And there's another lady sitting beside him on the other side. Keep adding some more little background details like the railing of the stairs on their back. Some more wall structures. And keep adding some last bits of details in between these two walls. There's this dark gap. So you can draw and stop at any time that you want. Right now, I just want to add final little bits of detail. These black bars hanging from the ceiling. I think this is for, for them to hang some decorations or lamps. And again, this line is really defines the perspective of this interior space even more. It's pointing to a vanishing point somewhere on the right side in the middle. Now I'm just adding the name of the cafe, Prado Cafe on Commercial Drive. Here is the look of my finished line work. It took me about half an hour. Okay, now it's time to paint watercolors to really make the uh, warm atmosphere stand out. So first of all, I'm just wetting the whole area first with clear water by squeezing my water brush. The very first layer of colors is always the warm, clean colors. Okay, so when painting watercolors, it's very important to start with the warm and bright colors first, blending on some orange, more or less diluted, just for more expression. So if you want really clean and vibrant watercolor paintings, it's very important to start with the lightest or the cleanest colors first. As you can see, I'm just putting on dashes of yellow oranges for the lamps and also for the overall interior. This is a very diluted mix of lemon yellow and medium yellow. Yeah, so you can, you can use the same color, but you can put more or less water into it to control the intensity. And also at the same time to create a sense of depth in a very simple way. And keep adding on these warm orange yellows here and there, pretty much for the whole interior space. Um, this cafe is very bright because it has uh, glass windows on three sides. As you can see, I'm using pretty much the same colors, a mix of orange and medium yellow, and maybe a tiny bit of brown, 
but I'm controlling the amount of water throughout the different areas that I'm painting. As you can see, um, the paint for the wooden floor in the foreground and the wooden frame, vertical and horizontal frames, the color is more intense, which contains less water and more paint pigment because I want them to stand out even more. And the walls in the back are very much diluted lemon yellows and they really look like they're being pushed back. Now I'm adding this uh, turquoise green color for the counters. And it really matches the color of my coffee mug in the, in the very foreground. So there's harmony in this sketch. Adding little bits of green for the little plants around the counter area. And as you can see, I'm starting to block in these cold colors, the greens, the turquoise, the blues. Now I'm starting to have a bit more balance in this sketch. So if you want to create a really powerful sketch, it's very important to have a nice balance of warm and cold colors rather than just one single kind of color. and just paint this metallic um, oven or, or something like that. That's pretty much in every bakery cafe with leftover bluish gray. And paint that little flower box. Okay, so now I think I'm gonna move on to the second layer of paints for, especially for these foreground elements like this wooden pole. So this is a less diluted mix of brown and orange, less water and more paint pigments of orange and burnt sienna mix. So another thing about watercolor painting is that you don't have to paint the original or the final colors of everything in one layer. You can always add on more layers to create sense of depth and intensity. Yeah, and keep adding some more intense orange brown for this wooden pole in the background. And also for these wooden beams close to the ceiling, every single brush show can be different, even though the color mixture, the ratio is the same. Every time we grab the same color, there's slightly different amount of color mixed in making the intensity slightly different. So there's more fluidity. And using this leftover dark brown and mixing a little bit of blue into it to create this patch of shade for the foreground of the wooden floor. So I'm actually able to see this patch of shade area and it's actually pretty important. Um, it draws the viewer's attention with this kind of intensity. And now I'm adding some pink magenta for this lady's shirt, dark blue for her pants, kind of from memory. And at the same time painting the rest of the people's faces with mix of um, um, yellow ochre and a little bit of red and very diluted. A little bit more red around the cheek area. So these people's faces look like they have more life. and just grab some leftover color that I used to paint the floor and the wooden beams to paint the frames of the menu. Grabbing some pink magenta and dilute it to paint this lady's sweater. Uh, mix some ultramarine blue with pink purple or royal purple to paint this lady's shirt. And this is kind of like an olive yellow green to paint this girl's shirt. Some ultramarine blue to paint her pants. Some yellow orange to paint their hair. And dark brown for this lady's hair. Yeah, this is pretty much done from real life observation because these girls, they stayed there for actually for a long time. And using the leftover gray to paint this guy's shirt. 
and now I'm starting to grab some shade color leftover blue purple to paint the shade on this girl's sweater just to give her body more three dimension with a few brush strokes and I decided just to paint this table in front of these girls just wet into wet very loosely it's better than leaving it white now I'm starting to use the leftover uh, blue purple shade to paint the wall behind so the wall in the middle the block can stand out even better in three dimension starting to use brown or burnt sienna mixed with a little bit orange using these little choppy brush strokes to paint the bricks so I think painting the bricks loosely this way with single brush strokes really helps to show the pieces better with white gaps in between and that's it a little bit of shade around the bottom of the pile and adding a little bit leftover gray for the tiles on the wall a little bit of shade just a tiny bit this is very much diluted leftover gray and also in this area of the wall it's actually quite dark so really have to um, judge and see the differences between the different grays okay so the rest of the painting process is going to be four times faster than real life painting speed just adding very small details here and there just to give more contrast make things stand out a little bit better some bright colors to stand out from the cold colors around the counter area and just adding tiny little streaks of shadow for this girl's shirt painting the server there and the jacket using this dark blue color and it really helps the plate to stand out even better painting around her neck add a little bit of streaks for the wooden table and just painting the couple right here in the corner painting his shirt and this lady's uh, shirt was red it really helped this part of the sketch to stand out even better with a warm red color yeah final little shades here and there to give three dimension to these beams and I'm gonna almost call it done just one last bit of shade around the ceiling area yeah most of the in this interior is very bright with sunshine and here is the look of my finished sketch it took me about 15 minutes in real time to do the drawing and watercolors thank you so much for watching my video everyone if you like it please click like and leave me a comment below subscribe to my channel for weekly updates i update my channel two to three times a week and yeah so in the upcoming days i'm gonna have a lot of urban sketch tutorials and home life sketch tutorials it's on the way back to the metro station see you again very soon next time